All right, welcome to another Friday Mortgage Coach Mastermind, and we have a super special guest today. Before we bring him on stage and start drilling him with questions and learning from this guy, I want to bring in my co-host and partner in crime, Todd Booksman. What's up, Todd? Hey, good morning, everyone. I am so excited that you're all here because I got to know Clayton last year. Uh, Housing Wire is one of the first things I look at every day when I uh, get my kind of what's going on in the world of mortgages and real estate. And uh, so excited that uh, we're here today with, with our special guest. Right on, Todd. And we got, man, we are on a trend where both of us have been on this call. And I don't think dating back, I think we've been doing this for two years now. We've been doing this Friday Mastermind. But I, I can't think of a time where we've both been on this call more often. Like we're trending. We are trending, but it's been three years, Dave. Come on. We're like, you know, we are, we are so, uh, so far in, right? So many masterminds and uh, keeps getting better, right? It, uh, I'm super stoked and eventually we'll all start traveling again and it might just be one or the other. But for now, yeah, it's fun to uh, see your smiling face a couple times a week. All right, guys. So, so every Friday we're here to mastermind. So if you're watching this on Facebook Live and you have a question or comment, put it down below for the folks that are in the Zoom platform. If you have questions, we will be moderating that. We do want to make this an interactive session. The, the topic is, is news hacking. And I want, I want you, before I bring in this guest, I want you to just be thinking, like, what is news hacking? Like, what, what is the definition of news hacking to you? But uh, I think we couldn't have a better guest to do this. This gentleman is the CEO of Housing Wire. Uh, Housing Wire, if it's not the most respected, it is the most respected by me, media company in the mortgage and housing space. If I don't care who you are, it's one of your top two or top three. These guys do a great job. Uh, the way they not only moderate news and bring in things that are happening outside of our industry and in our industry, but guys, they're bringing in original stories that can help you be more successful. And the one thing I don't see enough I don't see enough loan officers thoughtfully, keyword thoughtfully, taking news from Housing Wire or from outside of our industry and then using it to build their audience on social media, using it to nurture their audience, using it to add value to your customers. So hopefully at the end of this call, you guys are like, hey, this hour of time, whether I was live, whether it was recorded, I'm gonna do a better job of thoughtfully taking news stories and I'm going to share those in a way that people actually look at what you shared and they get value from what you shared. So, so Clayton, that was a big, big goal. You think you can deliver on that a little bit? I think we can. Uh, that's, that sounds, that sounds spot on with the plan. And, uh, and thank you again for, for inviting me today. I, uh, usually in this zoom world we live in, you, you meet people online and, and build a relationship. And, uh, and then one day you meet in person. Well, today it's kind of, it's fun. I originally met Todd at a, at a um, Cuban restaurant in Miami last year. So we actually got to meet in person and literally break bread um, before we built this digital relationship. So uh, pleasure to see you, Todd and Dave. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, it's going to be fun. So before we get into like news hacking, let's define it. And if you're on this call and you have a definition for news hacking, and I don't want the cut and paste from Wikipedia. Don't put that down below. But like, if you just have like a sentence, a tweet as to what news hacking is, feel free to put your comments down below. But before we get into that, Clayton, like, just tell us, like, how did you become the CEO of Housing Wire? I'd just love to know a quick story on that. Yeah, so uh, I, I started my career in, in banking. I was at, at Citigroup um, in a rotational training program and kind of grew up to a national level sales and, and marketing role in the retail and small business uh, banking, worked on a lot of cross-sell initiatives for, for retail products, um, credit cards, small business, uh, consumer deposits. Um, and, uh, and then went back to business school and uh, fell into this in investment banking path and went and did a few years of M&A advisory where I actually aligned with a, a group that did a lot of media deals. So we were advising operators and owners of, of media companies on, on buy side and, and sell side transactions. And in that, uh, in that process, I uh, kind of I fell in love with the operating side of the business and um, advisory is a, is a lot of fun. 
But uh, at a point, advice comes to an end and you advise on this deal and uh, you talk about the future and you do the financial projections and all the amazing things that can come through an acquisition and you, you close the deal, you go out to a fancy dinner and it's on to the next one. I uh, fell in love with what happened on the other side of that. So I decided to, to make a jump out of the investment banking world and go out and look for a business um, that fit that profile to, to acquire and operate. And after a, a little fundraising and a few years of searching for the right business, um, was fortunate to, to meet the founders of Housing Wire at a time when, when they were ready to talk about selling the business and, and moving on. And uh, it was a perfect fit for, for my background and my interest. And uh, so in 2016, we acquired the business. My wife and I relocated from, from New York down here to, to Dallas, where we're headquartered today. And uh, we've been running hard for four years, building this business, improving the platform, growing our audience, hiring great media professionals to, to play the most important roles in the organization. And uh, it's pretty, been a pretty exciting run. What a, what a cool story. So guys, this is a, an entrepreneur. I mean, he moved his family, bought a company, and is, is just going after it. And, and I do think just me as a consumer and me watching what you've done, uh, it, it's it's really impressive. I mean, it's it's your it's well thought out media. It's well packaged media. It's well distributed. How how would you describe Housing Wire for someone that's on this? And I'm sure everybody on this call is like, hey, we know what Housing Wire is, and we get the <laughs> newsletter, whether they're a premium subscriber or whether they're they're yep. just getting you know kind of free updates. How would how would you describe it? And and realize that you're talking to the mortgage industry, and you're also talking to the mortgage industry who wants to help the real estate industry. So that like describe housing wire real quick and then we'll get into news hacking. Yeah. So uh, the, the quickest description of housing wire is housing wire is the daily source of news and information for housing professionals on mortgage, real estate, and FinTech. We, we focus very tightly and in, in that area, we want to cover everything that matters to the professional audience as it relates to the mortgage lending, servicing, and secondary markets as well as the real estate agent and broker world. And then the FinTech uh, incumbents and disruptors who are either working with mortgage and real estate companies or, or working against them. And uh, so we're, we're, we're tightly in that world of the, the housing transaction and home ownership experience as it relates to the professional audience. Love that. Todd, any questions you have for Clayton or anything you wanna frame for our audience? Well, I mean, you talked about it, Dave, right? How do you, you know, that's such a great, well, first off, a great elevator pitch, right? For a, for a community that's encouraged people to be articulate when someone asks you a question about what you do. And Clayton, obviously you just nailed it. And I want you all to be thinking about, um, you know, all the things that Clayton just said that we know you can use personally for your own personal development, as well as to educate those around you. So what would you say would be the top recommendations you would have for our loan officers here to engage with housing wire to get that information is it signing up for your newsletter is it is it attending engage what what would you recommend yeah so i, I think every profession we try to serve the professionals in the industry and the cadence and the amount of information that they need to be successful in their roles so our, our core product that we've been distributing for 12 years has been a, a daily update newsletter that we send every morning and every afternoon we often see that that product is the best fit for kind of executive and leadership levels in the industry that, that rely on a constant flow of information on the economic data and in news that's coming across um, the, our newsroom desk. Two years ago, we launched a, a product that I personally edit and curate called, called Lending Life that is specifically for loan officers. So I really encourage all the loan officers in the mortgage coach community to sign up for Lending Life. Um, we, we curate and send three times a week. I'm adding some perspective and trying to, to tie together the top stories in our newsroom as they relate to the, the as they relate to the loan officer. So we're really trying to tie this in and like, Hey, these are the, these are the employment numbers you need to know. These are the interest rate information you know. The, these are the product information you need to know. What's happening in Jumbo? What's happening in non-QM? What's happening with Fannie and Freddie? And really trying to bake that together into a cohesive story that um, some of our loan officers have joked is the information necessary to make them the, the smartest LO at happy hour. So whether you're uh, going out to drinks with your, your realtor partners or talking to your neighbors in a socially distanced front yard gathering, Lending Life should give you the information you need to know what's happening in mortgage. Love, 
Love, love that. So guys, if you're watching this at Facebook, you'll see that there was just a link put in by Karen. Karen, thank you for giving us that nice quick link for anybody <laughs> that wants to sign up for it. And, and I recommend you do. Guys, as you know, if you follow this community, I believe that the best loan officer is the best teacher. And to be the best teacher, you, you need to be the smartest person in the room. And when it comes to mortgage and real estate, and, and this is a premium piece of content. So if you want to be smart, you need to read it and consume it. And then if you want other people to think you're smart, and if you want to build a brand that I'm an advisor, you need to know how to share it. You need to know how to take this news and interpret it back to your audience. And, and you need to know how to share it in a way that your audience is going to click on it and consume it. So let's, let's get right into news hacking. And I mean, how do you, how do you define new? What is, what is, what does that word even mean to you, Clayton? I think actually we should start with what it isn't. And uh, in, in the past five years, uh, the word news jacking has actually probably gained more prominence than the news hacking and news jacking typically comes with a pretty negative connotation of something that when brands try to jump on top of a headline or a story and, and make it about them and, uh, and try to use a trending topic on, on social to, to, to raise brand awareness for something that kind of might be outside of their lane, potentially controversial, controversial. And we all know that brands need to be really articulate and meaningful and authentic with their message. And news jacking is often a tactic that takes people out of their lane, brings them into dangerous territory, all, all, for, the, all for that click and, and trying to, to drive traffic, even if it's not the, the traffic or the, the intended um, tone and intention that they're going for in their, in their marketing and client relationship management goals. So, um, so let's talk, so news jacking, probably something you wanna stay away from. We're, we're looking for topics here that are, are relevant to your brand as an originator and relevant to your community, uh, the local market, the MSA that, that you do business in. So kind of moving toward news hacking as I define it. And, and Dave, you'll have to let me know if anybody did jump in with their, their version on, uh, on the Facebook comments. But I think of news hacking. I will, I will bring it in. Okay. I, I think of news hacking as a way to, to amplify, amplify your brand uh, by providing relevant content to your audience. So on social, if your audience are your local realtor partners, your past clients, um, then you're looking for information that adds value to, to that community. So that can, that can be in two veins. That can be the super relevant stuff of what's happening in housing, what's happening in mortgage, can also be information that's relevant to the lives and lifestyles of the people you do business with. So it's the, is it the local, local restaurants and the stuff that really helps you solidify yourself as a, as a local leader and someone who's really part of the community. So there's two entirely different paths you can go down in that, that news hacking avenue, but ultimately looking for ways to solidify your position as, a, as an expert and a critical member of the community. So what are, what are your thoughts on this? You know, one of the, the things that I, I know I try to be you know, intentional about, and when I think of news hacking, is I, first of all, I think that people that create news for a living and make a living by, hey, having a place where people subscribe and engage, like you guys are pros at coming up with headlines. And you're pros at putting the things that are hottest on the list. So part of it to me is just like watching what, what's getting the most engagement on news. Like part of the concept of news, news hacking is like, what's trending? Like, what do people want to know about? And then the other part is, now how can I share that in my audience in a way that's helpful for me. What are your thoughts on that? And what are, like if you were a loan officer and your job was to build audiences of realtors, get referrals from realtors, build audience of homeowners, get loans from homeowners, like what would you be doing? Like how would you be studying media and how would you be news hacking? Yeah. So, I mean, we're coming at this today with like a, a uh, a focus on collaboration. So at Housing Wire, we're able to cover the top stories at a, at a national level. And we cover that, as I mentioned in the, the elevator pitch, that we're covering that for the housing professionals. So we're thinking about how does this impact loan originators? How does it impact mortgage executives? How does it real, impact real estate brokers? And telling the story through that lens. 
what ultimately originators and agents need to do is think about, okay, so we have this information, um, housing wire, or whoever, whoever you're reading went out and, and, and did the work to talk to sources and bring us factual information. Now, how do I apply that to my community and thinking about, so how do I take original content and make it original and applicable to the people that I need to strengthen relationships with? So, you're looking at headlines, you're looking at the top stories, whether it's in, in Lending Life, on, on Google News, on the Housing Wire homepage, and you're able to see what's trending, you're able to see what, what we're breaking, and take that information and take the twist. So, so why does it matter last week that, that Fannie Mae issued a lender letter on self-employed income verification? So don't, that's not the art, like, like your, your realtor partners probably don't need to know about the lender letter, but they do need to know how you will be taking a look at uh, income calculations for self-employed borrowers. So how do you twist that, that theme into something that applies for the audience you're trying to connect with? And, and that's really the focus of what I want to get into today with news hacking is taking original content and making it original to your audience through social and email and personal one-on-one -on -one conversations. Love, love that. Todd, any questions or thoughts so far? So what do you think the best practices on that, Clayton? Is it, is it just sharing it and then adding your comments to the top or doing something different? Yeah, I think there's a, so, so the reality is in the algorithms, everybody succeeds a, a little bit differently. Um, I personally get the, the broadest reach on, on LinkedIn and I, and I have found that I get the broadest reach with, with text-based posts. Other people do extremely well sharing links and other people do extremely well sharing video and images. There seems to be some, some, some tweaks in the algorithm that reward different people based off the content that, that they've had perform strongly in the past. So I'm not coming today with a, like a one size fits all approach, like share the link, use the so social share icon. But I do think no matter what your approach is, whether you're sharing a post copying and pasting and sharing a link um, or, uh, or, or sharing a video, you have to add some original thought on top of that about how it applies to the audience you're, you're trying to connect with. So there is, a, there is a requirement of putting a little thought into um, customizing that message for your intended audience. The one thing I do know is that blind link share is a, uh, is a pretty low low reward activity on all social platforms. So just dropping a link and posting it without a, um, without a, out a comment seems to get very low reach and very low distribution on, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and, and Twitter. Let me comment on that guys. Uh, the frame in many cases is more important than the message itself. And then this is something we've learned from Renee Rodriguez. We've talked about it and, and we get like, we get a lot of people that post in the mortgage coach community and they don't put a frame on it. And I'll, I'll tell you a lot of that. We do not approve into our community. Like if it's not like obvious value and an obvious personalization, like, Hey, I'm pushing this into the mortgage coach community. And, and there's a frame that has value to our community. We don't, I mean, first of all, we don't even approve a lot of it. So it, it, the, I, I just want everybody to get, take away from what he just said. And I'm going to just say it like it is. The frame is the most valuable thing. You need to make sure that you're putting it in a way that has context to your audience. And you need to put it in a way that you sound smart. Like, like if you can add value to the message through your frame, that's how you share media. And, and if you are sharing media and you're not putting a frame on it, know that you're just like, you know, throwing something against the wall. And I, I don't think I've ever seen it stick. Like, I don't think I've ever seen someone just post something, share it, not frame it. And wow, look at that thing went viral. I, I don't even know if I've ever seen that. I don't think that's possible, Dave. But you know, it reminds yeah. me of our conversation where I interviewed you and Craig Sewing last week and Craig talked about the power of you, right? It's, it's gotta be about your audience. It's less about you, it's more about them. And so I really love uh, your suggestion there, Clayton, of really helping people try to figure out what the best way to do that is. Yeah, I think Dave nailed the word there. The, the framing matters. And ju just like uh, art um, or, or your photos uh, or a poster, it looks a hundred times better and uh, gets a lot more compliments when it has a, has a nice frame and um, frame on it. So uh, that's a very, very good positioning, Dave. Yeah, and I, I want to say one thing because I want to correct a word I said. You want to share it in a way that makes you look smart. And you know what? That was wrong. 
you know, because you're going to look smart if you make it about the audience, what Todd just said. Like, you put the, it has to have a frame when you're sharing, and you are always looking at your audience as the hero. Like, I want to make them smarter. I want to make them more successful. I want to make them smarter. And if you do that and you put them first, then you will look smart. So I just want to make sure there was no misinterpretation that I want you guys to like, okay, I need to frame it and I need to be clever so that I'm the hero. No, 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 no. If you are always framing it and you're like, how do I make this really like my frame creates more value to the message or my frame is more likely to get them to click on the message. That's the goal. Anything you want to add to that? Um, and, and more likely to engage. So we, we know that that reach only gets more powerful when your community interacts with your content. That That's how you build relationships. It's also how you uh, extend the reach of content and post and, and social. So the, you want to frame in a way that encourages engagement and, and conversation and doesn't leave you in the, 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 the one way social media trap of uh, just talking at people versus talking with people. Love, love that. So community guys, if you have questions, if you're live, ask them now. If you're watching the recording of this, I would love to see some examples. So if you have taken a piece of news and shared it in a way that's unique and valuable, let us know what you're doing. Like, like in this call right now, we're gonna, I'm gonna change the topic a little bit so that we come back to news hacking, but we also give you guys a, an opportunity to add some thoughts. So Clayton, I know you are doing a, an awesome event next week. Uh, how many, well, first of all, tell everybody what the event is, how many people do you have going? And then I wanna get some just marketing best practices from you. Like I wanna get some, some of the gold that you're gonna share at this event. But tell, tell everybody about the event you're doing next week. Yeah, so this is our, our third annual Engage.Marketing Summit, uh, the first of which is entirely virtual. Uh, well, welcome to the COVID-19 world. Um, so uh, our first one was in Dallas two years ago. We brought it to Charlotte last year. We were scheduled to be in Orange County this year, but uh, now we are live everywhere and uh, have uh, 1,100 guests from the mortgage and real estate world uh, registered to attend the Engage Marketing Summit next week. So Engage Marketing is a concept we came up with to try to bring relevant content and community to marketing professionals and origination leaders in the mortgage world. And we, we were seeing that so many marketing professionals get to attend, attend conferences, attend events, plan happy hours, um, but they're always doing it and they're, they're working at those events. They're not engaging with the, co the content. They're not engaging with each other, they're not building relationships. The, the marketers and the origination leaders are there to work, they're there to sell. And uh, we wanted to bring an event together where the content was focused on those people and you're actually able to engage um, with your peers and build relationships that are, that are some of the, the best in the business at, at marketing strategy. So we have some incredible topics on marketing, marketing yourself. So building brand around yourself as a local um, or regional expert. We have uh, topics on voice, on video, on social, on uh, technology integration and leveraging the, the right tools to help you um, increase your, not only increase your pull through, but also increase uh, retention of, of past clients, which I think is a, a big topic in this, in this low rate environment. So we have, I think it's, we're 33 speakers right now um, with, with, with uh, people ranging from CMO titles at some of the, the biggest non-banks, um, like uh, Quicken, New American Funding, um, movement mortgage to big depositories like Wells Fargo, and even some of the leaders from the, the wholesale world, world like EWM and, and PRMG, uh, and then a lot of originators and real estate agents who are also coming in and, and sharing their best practices. So it'll be a really unique experience where we are using a, a new platform for the first time that um, these Zoom calls are, are amazing, but we're trying to bring a platform together that allows for that in-person engagement, community building that we're, we're all kind of missing right now from uh, the in-person uh, interaction that we, uh, we just haven't had in a few months. So uh, we've built a, a platform that will allow for a lot more chat and inter engagement between our um, speakers and, and audience members and uh, even um, putting on a, a little happy hour with a, um, hosted by a, a comedian who runs a pretty popular real estate meme account um, to share some of his best practices on, on engaging with audiences on social with some humor. 
Love, love that. So guys, I got a new term we're going to throw in today's call called marketing idea hacking. So this is a call. This is an event where if you are a marketer, you should be coming to this and hacking ideas like, like some of the best leaders in the mortgage industry and real estate industry are going to be there. And so there's just going to be a lot of ideas to you to pull from. Well, typically they have promoted this to the you know, management and director level of the mortgage industry. Um, the leader of Mortgage Coaches marketing team went last year. Yep. We sent two people to it. This year, we're sending people to it. Uh, and, and so, but it, guys, even if you're a team, like Ryan Grant, you know, if you're watching this call, you should have someone from your team. Yes, I'm sure Fairway is going to be there and the executive team is going to be there. But if you have a team and you have someone in charge of marketing, you should be there. And I'll, I'll tell you what, because marketing has always been a thing of mine. If I was, a, if I was a top producing loan officer, I would be at this event. Someone like if you care about your personal brand, you care about creating content on social media, online, digital, you should have someone at this event. So uh, it's not too late. We'll have a link down below to sign up for it. Uh, Clay, anything else you want to say about it before? I want to like, I want to get some freemium ideas. So yeah. if there's people on the call right now that aren't going to be there, like. Give us some ideas. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, one of the powers of virtuals. We're able to uh, to bring this information and content to uh, a lot more people um, in origination roles that either didn't have the, the the time or bandwidth to hop on a plane and and fly out to California. So uh, we're excited that virtual kind of democratizes access to, to some of these best practices. And one of the things we've seen over the years and we, we've learned is that we we don't invite speakers who aren't we're going to hold their cards close and, and not share their best practices. These are all people who are, are actually telling us what, what they're doing, um, putting the best ideas out there. And what we've seen is uh, that iron sharpens iron. And each year those people are, are coming back and sharing new ideas. And uh, everybody has a, their unique twist and unique culture. You look at that, all the banks across the country, everybody can be great at at, at social, but they're going to sound entirely different because the teams and the cultures are, are, are very different. And that's one of the things that, that we're seeing come across. And uh, so Dave, I, I won't, uh, I won't pretend that, that, that I'm the expert in mortgage origination marketing. What I'm good at is bringing the experts into a room and getting them to share their ideas. But the one thing that we are seeing come across on, on all of the sessions is a get out there and do it mentality. And, and that's something that I would, uh, that's, that's the freemium content right now is uh, that just like, just like you're doing in this weekly mastermind and we're seeing so many amazing origination teams across the country do is you've been forced back into your home and uh, kind of lost the ability to, to have coffee meetings is get online, do the video, do the voice um, and stay committed and also know what your metrics for success are. Um, we've seen, so social can give you a really big audience really quickly, uh, as can podcast, but you have to know what matters to you. And uh, if your goal is to be the, the most recognized expert in mortgage in Milwaukee, don't worry if there's not tens of thousands of people listening to your shows every week. You just need that 7, 10, 70 realtors listening to you that can be your loyal refer referral sources. And that can be a massive success and high ROI on the content you're putting in. Uh, the time you're putting into creation of that content. So that's one of the, the things that keeps coming up in our, on our planning calls is get out there and do it and, and know what success looks like for you. And uh, that might not mean tens of thousands or, or millions of views and engagements. Uh, it, it might just mean a, a couple referrals that change your business. So quick question, Clayton, I'm assuming if someone signs up and they can't watch all day that the recording will be available afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our, our HW Plus members, which we're actually giving uh, all of our, uh, everyone, who, everyone who signs up for Engage gets HW Plus for a year, has access to all of our video content from our Engage Talent Summit in February and Engage Marketing, um, which is coming up next week. So uh, we make all of that content available to our members. So I love the idea of getting out and doing it. I mean, that just always seems to be the theme. People are just hesitant and then they start and then they don't get engagement right away and then they fail. Yeah. So how would you encourage someone to just get out there and do it and then push through the fact that it's going to take some time until they build an audience? I think we've, you've seen an, enough people muscle through that, that curve that you have some examples to look toward as to what success looks like. 
And knowing that if you're going to venture down the path of launching, we'll use podcasts, for example, this is one of the topics that Brennan Nath and Phil Treadwell are going to, are going to talk about next week is that that first episode might not have much distribution. The second might not have much either. The third, the fourth, the fifth. But if you're committed to doing this for six months, a year, and building that audience up over time, uh, amazing things can come from it. So I think it's very important up front and to look to, look to some of the examples of people who have muscled through that desert of, of trying to get to the other side of having engagement and having a high ROI experience in the content they're creating. Those examples are out there now. So you don't have to, you're not, you're not in this alone. You're not, uh, you're not doing something for the, the very first time, even though you might be doing it for the very first time in your, in your market and with your community. So you can look across the country. You can look at, look at leaders who have done this in, in Orange County or in Atlanta and, and see how long it took them to, to get some traction and know that you're going to have that same challenge, but it doesn't mean stop. It's motivation to keep going, keep pushing through. Same with building any career, especially an origination career where, where, where sales and referrals are, are the measure of success. You don't walk in day one to success. Maybe, maybe it feels that way in this rate environment, but uh, in mo most environments, it takes a little, a little bit longer to get there. So remember guys, if you have questions, put them down below. So let's, let's come back to news hacking a yep. little bit because I, I actually just got a text. Uh, Dan Rawich was not able to make it on the call, but he really wanted to make it to this call. And when I, him and I were talking about it and he, he said, I, I read Housing Wire every day. And as you guys all know, in this community, he does our morning market update every day in our, both our rate watch app and within this community. And he says that I'm always calling out housing wire articles that you should be forwarding to your realtors. And, and, and sometimes that means emailing it. Sometimes that means taking a screenshot and putting it into Facebook or social media. Sometimes that means taking a picture and putting it on your story. Sometimes that just means learning and then using your words and playing it forward. Uh, but it's, it's something that you do. So could you talk to us a little bit about that? And then I, I don't know if I'm maybe putting you on the spot with this, but I, I think you guys do just such a great job of coming up with scroll stopping headlines. And I, I know you're probably not the one who runs the team and you're in charge of coming up yeah. with scroll stopping headlines, but I do want to know, like, how do you guys do it? Like how much time do you put into coming up with scroll stopping headlines? So let's do the first one but know that I am going to put you on the spot a little bit about that. Uh, well, you want to start with the headlines? You want to go right, you want to go right to it? <laughs> However you want to answer the two things I threw at you. I threw like two balls, two like hot potatoes. Which one do you want to do first? Yeah. So, so we run a, a very uh, data intensive business. So we use a, a lot of tools to identify the, the stories that are most important to the industry, but also identify the topics that are most engaging for our audience. So uh, our, our kind of back pocket tool, I'll, I'll just share it, um, all the publishers out there who want to use it. It's called, it's called Parsley. Um, it helps us kind of slice and dice all of the, or parse, I guess would be the, the name of the company, <laughs> slice and dice all of the information about what's trending in any given day, also in any 10 minute increment and where we see engagement on, on certain topics. And, and then not, well, one of my favorite sayings in, in media is the most important article you write is the, the second article your reader clicks on. So you can bring somebody to you off a, off a snazzy headline, but if they don't click again, they're never going to come back to you. They're, they're not going to sign up for that newsletter. They're not going to become a daily loyal reader. So the, the idea of just writing clickbait and attention grabbing headlines is a, is a loser's business in, in media. You have to know how to grab attention, but you also have to know how to keep it and, and make sure you're not deceiving your audience in the information they're going to be gaining uh, in, in the content they read. So we use our, our, data tool to look at what's trending in any given day, um, any given hour, any given week, and make sure that we are not only incorporating those topics into the, the coverage that we're, we're doing every day, um, but we're also making sure we get the most important points across in the, in the headline and subhead to bring readers in and get more context on those important stories. We know 
that today every single business news organization in the country covered unemployment numbers. So do we do it the same way as everybody else? No, we have to take a different angle and talk about how it applies to the mortgage industry and, and how lenders are reacting to that information. So that, that's one thing da data has really helped us understand. If we you can't look like everybody else, we're not gonna go do earnings recover coverage of Citigroup and try to race Dow Jones to the, to the publish button. We're gonna sit back Read, read the 10K, read the 10Q, see what's happening in the mortgage business, come out a little bit later with more context than anybody else is able to, because we've learned through data that that's what our audience responds to and that's what they expect from us. Wow, that was, that was cool. I, I loved hearing that. And uh, if anybody could put a link to Parsley or Parse down <laughs> below to help our audience. And then, and then mortgage coach community. I, I know I have interviewed folks. The, one, the interview I remember most recently was Bill Hillstad, who is our resident Facebook marketing guru. And Bill makes a case that, hey, you're only going to get 20% of your audience on Facebook if you're not intelligently boosting. Yeah. And, and he has done freemium calls for our community. He also has done a boot camp recently where he had over a hundred mortgage coach members go through a six week boot camp, and, and so one, you, he gave some free tools. I think he talked about how to see what's trending on Facebook, how to, how to use Google. So if you're watching this and you are a marketer and you are, you've got your ways of identifying what's trending and you're willing to share it, you know, guys share that in the group. Let's play that forward. I'll, I'll think of which interview for Bill Hillstad that I'm going to share in the group because Bill, would, would take what Clayton just told us, okay, here's some stories, here's some headlines. Now, how do we distribute and promote those in Facebook? Uh, Todd, anything you want to add on that? I'm just laughing because Bill's watching in Facebook and he's, he's making comments about what he's, what he's done. He's talking about, which again, is on the videos from when we've interviewed Bill. He just says that um, his personal favorite uh, news hacking uh, curation technique is to record a movie trailer version of a story along with a link. Um, if you do that, um, this you get video views and build your audience um, before sending people away. The share button, just send them away anyway. So um, as always, Bill's a great part of this community and I think definitely uh, proof that uh, he's here learning from uh, Clayton as well. Yeah, that, that's cool. I'm gonna have to follow Bill and, uh, and check out some of those videos. Um, and so, so on that, that, that data-driven approach, I mean, we, we do, we, we use that in our, our publishing experience. So if you guys don't mind, I'll, I'll share the screen real quick and hopefully share uh, a little section of our, our site that, that helps people out in this effort. We'd uh, love that. Let me jump over to Chrome And, and Bill Hillstad, we're gonna make sure we send you a panelist link. So if you get the panelist link, join us and uh, would love to see your shining smile and just uh, get a couple ideas from you as we wrap up today's call. Hey Dave, can you see my screen now? We can. So I just came over to the Housing Wire homepage and, and we set up our page uh, in, a, in a couple of different ways. So the top of the page is curated by our editors. This is what we believe is most important, the most important articles from the last um, 48 to, to 72 hours that, that we we're curating and making sure we draw attention to. We also use a data-driven approach in the next section. So we're pulling in our, our trending news, le leveraging uh, data from what has velocity from our readership. So this can be a really important tool. I'll um, go to full screen here. And uh, this can be a really important tool that LOs can use to say, hey, I don't have much time today. Let me go to Housing Wire real quick. Um, we'll, we'll refresh the page, go to Housing Wire, shoot down to, um, shoot down to trending news and see what people are engaging with this week. So uh, we, um, this is just in the last seven days. So these are articles that people are engaging with in the last seven days. And if you have an eye and you're doing daily content and you wanna make sure you have fresh information, we have this latest post section right here. You can come in and see what we've published in the last, usually the last couple hours. Um, uh, so we, we have the most recent information as well as the trending, trending topics. And what I, what I hope that LOs can do is use this information to be informed, but then identify opportunities to make this content relevant to your community. And each of you has the, the ability to add a layer of context that we just can't do on a national level. 
um, without every article being 50,000 words. So we can uh, use this article about Airbnb properties won't make a dent in the housing market as an example. So there's been a lot of talk in the industry as if Airbnb got kind of clobbered um, during the stay at home order days that if that inventory, those, those owners flooded the market, um, what would that mean for housing? Would it bring the inventory we need? Would it hurt home prices? In the end, uh, Airbnb inventory only makes up about 0.8% of, uh, of housing inventory. So not going to be the flood that, that messes up a, a national market, but in certain regions that might be really impactful. So if you're in Charleston um, that has a lot of Airbnb inventory, is, is, does this have a totally different feel to you? Um, if you're, uh, you live on a, a lake where the whole lakes, uh, everyone, um, gets a little extra income from uh, their Airbnb being on the weekends. Will this have a different impact? And so what we hope that loan originators can do is take our content that we cover at a national level and make it relevant for your community, make it relevant for your referral sources. And, uh, and if you do that, um, I'd be really satisfied as a leader of housing wire that we're providing value to you, not only helping you stay informed about what's happening in the, the housing economy, but helping you build your business by being the smartest originator um, in your neighborhood. I love, love, love that guys, you know, localizing. I want you guys to write down two terms right now, personalize, localize. And, and so when you're, and then, and then frame, remember, put a frame around everything that you're doing. And if you're on this call, there's a very good chance that you are either a local referral based mortgage professional, or you manage and lead local and referral based mortgage professionals. So I want you to just like, if you get nothing else from this call that you, you need to put a frame on it. And I love that personalize, localize for your audience. And remember they're the hero. If you're doing it in a way that they're the hero, you'll become the hero. I mean, you're the guide, but you'll become the hero. And just a reminder, you know, I'm such a fanboy of story brand marketing made simple. One year, you should try to get those guys to speak at your, your event. I, I interviewed Donald Miller. And, and if you haven't watched my interview with Donald Miller or JJ Peterson, you know, his head of training, I've interviewed both those guys. They're, they're incredible. And so if you just take some of the wisdom as a marketer from those guys and you take housing wire, like I want you guys to think of it like housing wire. It's like your, it's like your paint. You know, it's, it's the stuff that you're painting and you're bringing back into your community. And so that was cool. And I'm glad you, uh, you kind of gave us a guided tour of your platform. I appreciate it. If, if, if it adds value, we're happy to do it. So Clayton, if you could, um, because I know I'm going to start doing, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna do it every month, but I'm going to be contributing some content to housing wire. Where will that be? Just cause you know, whether people are on this live or they're watching the recording, I want them to know, like, if you follow Mortgage Coach and you think that we bring great content to bear, where, where will that content be? Yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago, we launched a, a new column called Pulse, uh, which is exclusively uh, an invitation-only column for, for industry executives and professionals that, that have a unique insight. So uh, we, we, our newsroom is editors and reporters and journalists. We're covering the, the news and doing deep analysis, but we know that the there's a there's a part of the story and a part of the the expertise that has to come from people who um who are in the field and uh either lending or working with and coaching um lending professionals every day so uh thrilled to have dave as part of the part of the pulse community um coming up very soon so you can find that content in in two places um i uh so on the home page you can scroll i think it's about halfway down the page there's a section called pulse and uh, that is only industry perspectives. It's, it's op-eds from industry leaders um, like Richard Cordray published a couple this week um, and, uh, and some very service journalism focused content that will help you uh, be better in your profession, which is what we expect to be working with, with Dave on. Um, we'll also be distributing that content through our newsletters, uh, specifically Lending Life, the letter that I've mentioned a couple times that I personally curate. And I know Karen can, if she hadn't done it already, we'll drop a link. It's a, it's a free newsletter. Um, I put a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and, and tears into it. Probably, probably not much of, not blood, but sweat and tears usually. Um, and, um, I don't know, this market's been rocky. There's probably a week or two in, uh, in the first week of April where it was a little bloody. But um, 
but we're putting together uh, what we consider uh, a really good product. And, uh, and if you don't agree with me, you can respond directly. So I send for my personal email address. So we're sending this out to over 20,000 originators um, three times a week. And uh, I love when people respond directly. I get some of my best tips, um, get some amazing quotes uh, and, and some good feedback. So uh, if you subscribe to Lending Life and you think I'm doing an amazing job, respond and tell me. If you subscribe and you don't like it, respond and tell me, we'll make it better. Um, I, I, I love it. We, we thrive on feedback here. This isn't, this is just like we're talking about with social media. It's not a, not a one way game. Like we, we need interaction with the industry. We need interaction with the folks that are, that are working with, um, home, home buyers and prospective homeowners every single day. And, uh, so that's what we, we thrive on. Well, I, I, I applaud you for that. I, I think it is so such a smart strategy, but to me, it's what makes you a great modern media platform is that not only do you have your own journalist and you're like hey this is what we're doing this is our news but then you are reaching out to people that you think have a unique perspective in the trenches and you're giving them access and i think that is incredibly smart and 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 it's it's not like it's a new idea but you execute it really well you know like the content is quality the leaders are content so mortgage coach community we're we're big fans of this check it out and it, and it looks like we've got Bill Hillstead jumping in, the uh, Facebook marketing expert for Mortgage Coach. What's up, dude? Not much. Just listening and learning from the pros. Would you, would you, would you learn or would you like and any, any <clears throat> quick Bill Hillstead wisdom that you could throw on us real quick? <laughs> well, one, I've already got the registration form up and I'm registering. Wouldn't miss the event. Uh, uh, subscribed. Uh, uh, and have been perusing content. Look, in, in this day and age, content is everything. Content is king. I preach it all the time. Y you can't just get out there, especially with all the me-centric stuff. It's, you turn me onto the book, Hit Makers. One of the things that stood out there is when we talk, 31% of the conversation's about me and the rest is about you and other things. On social media, 82% of the conversation's about me. It's all anybody ever talks about. You need to give and we can't all be great journalists. We can't all be great content creators. So the secret for me is you have to find great content that you can share, but you don't ever just share it. We all have millions of views, but we hit the share button and we send people away. And that's the mistake. If you offer your commentary, your editorial, your whatever, and that's what I said earlier that Todd was reading, how many times you've been suckered into a really lousy movie by a, a great movie trailer? Can you not just give that quick movie trailer version of the <clears throat> synopsis, the wow, the hook, the most amazing scene in the movie kind of thing, and then use this content and point off to it. So constantly looking at content so that you can find the stuff worth sharing, offering some commentary, posing some questions. I think the author's got it on three out of four points. I think he's off on one. Curious to get your take. Yeah. And then share that content. Now you're sharing the best content in the industry. And no offense, Clayton, but it's like putting Clayton's amazing writers to work for you. He's got the headlines. He's got the hooks. He's got the stuff. Put it to work for you. And you're still helping and sending the traffic there, but you want to bring it through your page, your website, your brand first, not just sending people away. So that's my two cents. It was like more like five cents, dude. That was pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, you and, up. And, and remember, <laughs> and remember, guys, there there is the sharing of it, and and if you are doing it purely organically, purely through your own page, if it's working and you're getting leads and you're getting engagement, like keep doing that. Yeah, absolutely. But remember, you're only getting to about twenty percent of the potential. So when you have a good story, a good message, listen to Bill how you're going to promote that, how you're going to invest in that to enhance your distribution. And, and Bill, if you could, maybe after the call, think of the last few interviews we've done, which one should we share within this thread so that they're getting some of your distribution strategies. Uh, and remember guys, Bill also does a boot camp. We're gonna be launching a new one coming up in a few weeks. Uh, do you, by the way, is Liz, your wife, his wife is a head of marketing for a large mortgage company. Is she going to this housing wire event or do you know? Um, I have no clue. <laughs> work, work as you know, uh, state and personal, we keep it separate. So well, I'll, I'm gonna no do me a favor, make sure she knows about it. 
I'm going to uh, personally refer. Go. I'm going to personally make this happen. <laughs> hey, and the one other thing, other thing I want to add about, about sharing content, this is something um, one, of our, one of our columnists and one of my buddies, Dustin Brom, always shares in the, in the real estate community is that it doesn't all have to be professional um, mortgage and real estate focused content. Like my, my realtor here in Dallas, for example, he is the, the, the epitome of like the mayor of our community. He, he's the one that you look to on Facebook for a new restaurant opening. He's the one who um, is talking about a, a road closure or, or construction. Like he, he, he gets that a community is more than just the, the real estate and mortgage product information. And, uh, and Dustin's talked about that a lot too at a national level for real estate agents. And I think the same thing applies in the mortgage community is that um, people expect you to be an expert in mortgage, but to really build a relationship and, and, emp and emphasize that you're part of the community, it, uh, you can share some other content besides housing wire. We, we'd love it to all be housing wire, but if there's a new restaurant <laughs> opening, um, there's a new neighbor moving into the neighborhood and someone you want to welcome, that kind of stuff um, can, can really help build that engagement. So when you do share professional content, you do share content that's relevant to your business, um, those people are there and they're ready to engage because they know you at a different, on a different level. It's like you know, we've I'm so been glad. a couple of our, our things that, that Todd and Dave and I have done before Clayton, because we always talk about the 80% of your content is for others, not for you. Most of the content that we do is, is some form of it's content for, with, and about others. That was one of our interviews, yeah. probably my favorite. Uh, uh, well, let's, you let's, don't let's, want it to be about you. But yeah, when you're yep. going to share something like Housing Wire, this is what we call screening content. If I take a piece that has something to do with getting a mortgage, I want content that will screen out good leads. See, when we go out to do lead gen, we want people to reach out to us, fill out a form, something like that. No, no, no. That's way, way too difficult to do. If I have a piece of content that only somebody who's thinking about a mortgage would be interested in reading, and I go out and I push that out there. And let's say that I'm averaging one cent per video view or two cents per through play, something like that. I drop a hundred bucks on that. I'm going to get 10,000, 5,000 minimum people who actually watch that video about something that screens them and more or less pre-qualifies them as somebody that's interested those people are then harvested into your audience and will now see all of your regular weekly content, which should be 80% giving interest for them. It's not for you. This is the, the right hooks, if you will, in your Gary Vaynerchuk jab, 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 right hook that you talk about a lot, Dave. That's what this I, content is. I love that. So guys, we are, we've got about seven more minutes. So audience, if you have a question for Clayton, Put it down below. I, I love that you, you closed out with that. So I, wanna, I want you guys to also make a, make a pie, make a circle. And I want you to think of the type of content that you're currently posting, that you're currently sharing to be that digital local mayor. And there is the industry called the housing wire, the economic updates. There is that. And I want you to just, I, I don't want you to do what's right. I want you to think, what have you done over the last 30 days? Like what percentage of your, Call it audience building, professional building. How much of it is, is that? How much of it is just personal? You know, like I've got a son who graduated from high school this year and, or this month, and we put some, I put some personal posts out. How much of it is personal? People getting to know you to the point Clayton just made. How much of it is local where I am taking local things that are re relevant to my audience and I'm sharing it? And then here's the thing I don't see enough of, guys. How much of it is where you are telling success stories around your clients. And when I say telling success stories around your clients, I'm not talking about cutting and pasting a testimonial. And I'm not saying don't ever cut and paste a testimonial or feed into that, like social proof is good, but I'm talking about the ripple effect of the value that you made for a family. So it's like, it's a refi market right now. I wanna push everybody in this audience that when you tell a refi success story, you not only tell about the monthly savings that you did, you talk about the, the five-year savings, blow it up. And, and I hope if you're a mortgage professional and you're a mortgage coach, you're also showing them, hey, like, what if you took that $347 and you prepaid your home, how many years faster would you become debt-free? 
and how much interest would you save? I want you to think about framing. I want you to think about storytelling. And I want to make sure that part of that pie, you know, at least 10% of that pie is you telling the success that you're bringing and you're going beyond the testimonial. You're going beyond the testimonial and then you're telling the ripple effect of the advice that you have. So, so guys, we got five minutes. Todd, I'm going to hand it to you to close out this last five minutes as a coach, making sure that one, people are taking action. And then two, you know, I'll let you close out with Clayton on whatever you think we should close out with. Well, I mean, certainly from the coach's chair, there's no doubt in my mind that you all need to rewatch this video, right? Clayton, walk through how you're going to use Housing Wire to actually add value to your sphere, whether it's real estate agents or clients. And then we had Bill jump in and then put a little bow on top of it and talk about how he's done in the past. So we've got his recordings. We'll make sure we get those down below as well. I'd spend a little bit of time watching that and then take Dave's little pie chart you just talked about and create that for yourself. Because ultimately, in the end, it's great that you just spent 55 minutes here, but if you don't take action on what you've gotten, then it wasn't probably the best use of your time. And I know I'll dig in more on housing where like I recently did an interview of uh, CEO of Homebot, Ernie Graham, and CEO of Sales Boomerang, Alex Chaffin, through Housing Wire, right? So I had a different perspective because I got to see Clayton's crew behind the scenes. And now I'm thinking as I'm hearing all of this, hey, what else can I do to learn to help grow my sphere, to help grow my influence based off of this information? And so uh, I just love that you all took the time to be here to learn. Now let's make sure we execute. What else would you add to that, Clayton, before we send this crew off? Uh Last, last thing I'd add is uh, just su supporting your message on um, taking action. Like this is, we can talk about these topics uh, every day and we will. I think that's important. I, I know that Dave and Todd have talked about a lot of these topics on, uh, on building your audience and community many times, but I think it's incredibly important to, to keep talking about these, these important things and uh, bringing experts like Bill who, who do it to share their perspective. Um, so, uh, my, my advice is, uh, put it into action and, um, get done. Yeah. I like that. Cause you said it Love. before, get out there and do it. Um, how about, how about you, Bill? How would you encourage this crew? Uh, you know what? That, uh, right there. Only don't <laughs> overthink this. Yeah. Just jump in and start to start to do this stuff, share this content, push it out there, uh, uh, and get that big massive reach and by the way one of the observations that came out of that last boot camp that we did is we're going through and looking at everybody's data little epiphany to me not to Dave he said yeah it makes perfect sense was people that when you put out that I just shared something from from housing wire people that watch that video are roughly four times more likely to continue to engage with your content and watch your future videos and comment on your posts, four times more likely than your own friends on Facebook, your own database. You're building, it used to be personal database, now you're building a personal audience, a personal following of people that relate to you, they like your style. So you're kind of the anchor that's sharing all this news, but that's your perfect farm that's your perfect database those are people who who have a natural connection with you start sharing this content with some budget behind it never put something out there that you're not going to get 5,000 views on it's just why put the effort into it so so guys that circle that circle that I had you draw that's that's your show like if you are on social media and you have a business interest in it. Like, hey, if you are just, you don't make money from leads, you're not building audience to do business, you know, don't listen to anything I'm saying and do whatever you want. But, but if you are on social media and you do have an expectation that you're going to make more money, that you're going to build a personal brand, you want to become the most well-known loan officer in a local market, you know, it's your show. You know, I am, as you guys all know, I'm big on the American Dream Show. Uh, I refer a lot of mortgage coach loan officers to be the American dream uh, leader in their local markets. And they, they got a show clock. And, and what we just described, it's, it's your show clock. So guys, if you got value from today's call, give us a like down below, please. You know, if you loved something about it, give us a love, share this with your team. Uh, this will be posted in the mortgage coach YouTube channel. So it'll be on live and this video will stay in our Facebook group. It will be in YouTube. So if you want to share it with someone, use our YouTube link. 
And uh, we really appreciate you giving your attention to us and your time. And Clayton, thank you, brother. I appreciate you jumping in the mortgage coach community. That was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Bill, thank you for the little surprise visit. Appreciate you and Todd, as always, dude. <laughs> yeah, well, Until next was. week, man. Take care, oh, everybody. Thanks, gentlemen. We'll see you guys. That was a wrap. All right, don't overthink it, guys. Get out there and do it. <laughs> That's it.